full name is Nasser El Yarimi, 24 years old, ethnically Yemeni, live in London. I am a currency trader. I like to speak about personal journey, life, downtimes, how to overcome feeling like there's no hope in your life, how to overcome being sad, channeling those thoughts into something positive, being better. Don't compare your chapter one to my chapter 10. You know what I mean, bro? You really have to be thick skinned to thrive in trading and not give up. As cliche as it sounds, it's not for everyone. Try and, try and have as many skills in your arsenal as possible, you know? Don't just limit yourself to being one tool in a toolbox. You have to know yourself. You have to be so sure of yourself, so confident of yourself. Like, the lion doesn't roar, you know, when a dog barks. Mm -hmm. Not to call someone a dog, but hey, if the shoe fits, then <laughs> you can identify as whatever you like nowadays, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> So what is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Visionation Success Stories Podcast. Today my very special guest here with me is Irimi. What's going on bro? How you been? I'm good bro. How are you? All good, all good. Alhamdulillah. I can't complain. Any day above God's green earth is another blessing. Alhamdulillah. Definitely bro. Okay, so for the viewers who may not know who you are or they may know who you are, but in your own words, describe to us what you do, who you are and what you're about. Uh, my full name is Nasser. Shamsuddin Saleh Nasser Ahmed Mohsen Ali Yarimi. It's a bit long, but a refugee sentence, you know how it gets. Mm -hmm. uh, from that name, everybody just calls me Yarimi. 24 years old, ethnically Yemeni, live in London. I am a currency trader. Um, I like to speak about my personal journey, life, downtimes, how to overcome, you know, feeling like there's no hope in your life, how to overcome being sad, into channel yeah, channeling those thoughts into something positive, being better, mm -hmm. self-development, personal development, self-improvement, um, excelling. So yeah, if I was to put myself in a nutshell, it'd just be about trading, personal development, and how to make yourself a better person. And I can only speak on my personal experiences. Mm -hmm. I'm not like a guru or full of wisdom or something, but yeah, I just like to share my personal experiences with things in life. Okay, yeah. So there's a there's quite a lot in there. So you're talking about like the the struggles and you know um, uh, dealing with dealing with things. So was that when you was growing up? How was it when you were your upbringing? Or, um, or was that like recent? Yeah. So I spoke about this previously on another podcast, but I'll touch over it very quickly. So my upbringing was always my my upbringing was fine. There was nothing there was nothing wrong with my upbringing. It's just that obviously I wanted more from life, and at the mm -hmm. time I didn't really have any money or any financial stability. Forget stability. Stability wasn't even a thing. Like any any financial capability, should I say, okay. to do whatever I wanted, because it all my dreams were basically blocked by finances. If I wanted to buy a camera, I couldn't because I never had the money for it. If I wanted to go on a holiday, up, other than with my family, obviously yeah. by myself, I couldn't because I never had the money for it. Um, yeah, so my dreams were being blocked by finances. So I was on a mission to basically say to myself, you know what? How can I attain this level of income so that I can finally go and pursue my dreams, what it is I want to do, help people around the world. Um, but yeah, growing up, I lived with my siblings, family, just your typical ethnic minority household, to be honest mm -hmm. with you. Yeah, nothing too special, but yeah. Okay, so you touched on, you know, you had that kind of block, financial block that wasn't allowing you to pursue what you wanted to pursue. Yeah. So how did you, what kind of steps did you take to o overcome that block? Um, a lot of things. In, like distributing my CV to every shop in my area, in my borough, mm -hmm. by hand, because I never believed that you should go and apply for a job. I always believed that you should sh take the extra step and do what 99% of people aren't doing, which is to go and physically appear in the place that you're applying for to show them that extra level of dedication that you've taken out your day. So I used to go hand out my CV, and I never really had an ego when it came to certain jobs. Like I understood that over over time, my long-term goal is to be an entrepreneur in whatever field it may be. Um, but I understood that it doesn't happen overnight and there's steps. So I would literally clean toilets and mop floors for five pound an hour mm -hmm. in cash to go and deposit that into my business. Okay. So that's what I was doing like every day. Okay, so at the time, yeah. so, you, so you were save, saving up for a business or you were investing it? In something? Investing it, losing it, going again, investing it, losing it, trying new things. I wasn't scared to try new things because for me, I understood at the time, I may have been what, 18, 19, 20, 
21. So for me, it was like, in this window of this chapter of my life, I can risk, basically. I've got time to risk. Okay. Um, to essentially prepare me for my 30s or my late 20s type of thing. So, yeah, I was basically risking, risking, risking and making the most out of my youth to um, find a vehicle that can take me to my dreams. Mm-hmm. Not to say that I'm old now, I'm 24. Yeah, but yeah. yeah I, I How old were you then when you was like kind of <coughs> handing out your CVs and doing that kind of oh, stuff? Oh, young. Like from 16. From 16 to 21. Okay. Yeah, from 16 to 21, graft. Okay. Yeah, every In day. that time, like what kind of things did you try as you said you was trying to find like yeah. kind of your so of that you want to do I tried sales I tried door to door leaflets I tried I was a, I was an estate agent mm-hmm. I tried selling perfume I tried videography camera work like shooting documentaries cinematic stuff flying drones um cleaning toilets mopping floors um working in retail like putting up boxes working in a DHL warehouse mm-hmm. Loads of different things. I tried everything to make it happen, basically. Okay. But I, I, I liked it because it was like, I understood that I'm just using this job as a stepping stone to get to where I want to get to. Yeah. yeah. So uh, I just want to touch on the videography because yeah. myself, I've been a videographer and you know, I'm doing a yeah. lot of video work Sick. and you, you obviously, yeah, yeah. you know, you've experienced that and yeah. you've been there and done that. So for you, was that kind of, as you said, some of them used for stepping stones? So I'm assuming that one you actually wanted to... Yeah, that, that's an actual passion of mine. Yeah, yeah. Like until this day, like I own cameras, like... I never really learned about ISO shot speed, aperture, this and that. Like my older brother was already into it. So he was showing me the okay. ropes type of thing. But I liked it. Like I like color grading. I like, you know, shooting in different frames per second because I'm, I'm really thinking of post-production later, how it's going to look. Mm-hmm. Shallow depth fulfilled and certain things that light and how lighting can. I was I was actually like doing research and trying to study the, these l- things later on in terms of like lighting and stuff. Like I had an actual passion for it. I would yeah. shoot short films on a random weekend. Yeah, yeah. I, just, I enjoy it. Yeah. You yeah. know? But that's a passion though, right? That's yeah. like similar similar to myself. I just started, I was doing everything for free, yeah. wasn't charging any money, getting any money. You just experience ah, it, build up your experience. Tell like me about it, bro. For like yeah. for a long time. Like yeah. you just build up your experience and then you get to a point where you think about okay, now I want to take it to the next level. Yeah, for sure. But then you've already got the experience yeah. in that sense. Because at that time, I don't know why I was thinking, I was like I was looking at buying like a videographer course because I was thinking mm. I got so much to learn. And but then I just done it. So how was it for you? Like you just you just went out of there and done it. And yeah, like, I just went out of there and done it. Because back in the days, like, I would, I would just shoot videos for everyone. Anyone who needed a video, I was the video guy. Like, even I would take my camera into school some days. And like I said, grow, like, I'd, uh, you told me you watched the other podcast, so you'd kind of know. But mm-hmm. I dibbled and dabbled in a lot of different fields, yeah. which is why I believe it, it impacts me till today. And it's, it's benefited me a lot uh, at this current point in my life because um, not to say I'm knowledgeable, but... I've kind of got basic knowledge in a lot of different fields, which yeah. kind of I feel helps like me out. Yeah, 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 I feel like it's really important to learn new skills all the time. Yeah. So like when I learned to do videography, I was still in university, mm-hmm. I was just stu- studying and I just done it as a side thing because I was passionate about it. Mm. So I feel like it's really, really good to learn new skills all the time because you never know when it can mm-hmm. come into use. Yeah. What, do, what do you think of that? No, for sure, definitely. I feel like um, you should strive to become like the yellow pages. Mm. You know what I mean? Yeah. You become the human form of the yellow pages type of thing where you can just open it and, you know, like try and try and have as many skills in your arsenal as possible, you know? Don't just limit yourself to being one tool in a toolbox. Yeah. If you have the time to kind of learn something else, I'm not saying dedicate your entire life to learning different things. Yeah. Be a master at one or two, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. but it's very important to kind of be clued up on different fields. For example, with myself, I can only speak for myself, like in terms of videography, cool, I can do that. I can apply it to my business today. Color grading, I can do that. Sound, engineering. Oh, I used to work in a music studio as well back in the days. Okay. Year 10 work experience. And because I used to do music back in the days, I'm very, like I know how to mix and master. Mm-hmm. So all of my audios, I would mix and master it. Like my videos, I would edit them. Um, so yeah, little skills like that is what I incorporate into my business today like public speaking the picture I just showed you of me when I was little yeah, yeah. with a microphone I've always been into like I don't know just speaking recording so yeah I feel like who I am and experiences I've gained over the years um, I kind of have a good amount of knowledge on each one that I incorporate into my daily life mm-hmm. yeah. okay so in terms of the two that you didn't mention so the videography and the music so what those are ones that are like as I mentioned before, it's not stepping stone ones, maybe one yeah. that you want to pursue. Yeah. So what kind of brought them to like an end, not an end, but yeah, like, you yeah, know what I mean? Like yeah. you, you looked onto- In terms of things. videography, it's not really an end, but I would say what made it a lot less is just being busy mm-hmm. uh, with things that are, w- that are more rewarding. Um, 
because at the end of the day that I did I didn't want that to be my job as it was my passion as well but obviously when I started making you know a certain type of income from trading for example um, and business it kind of made me think okay cool like people are always on a budget to pay videographers yeah. and the budget ain't great so it's like I would have to break my back just to make what 30k in a year 40k in a year whatever it was yeah so and I, I never made that by the way from videography <laughs> I think the most I made from videography in total from all of my jobs no more than 3k wow. all of my jobs yeah but the passion is what made me get up mm -hmm. do you get what I'm trying to say yeah. so um, yeah that's why I stopped that with the music religion I can't yeah. it's, it's, listening to it is one thing obviously but making it is a whole another thing and it's like the concept I was speaking about it, it's like residual sin so I didn't I had to put an end to that and stop making music, yeah. Okay, okay. So, 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 in terms, so, in terms of music, when was it that you made that change? There must have been something that said, okay, like I don't want to do it anymore. Uh, yeah. Um, was there like a like a specific trigger, or was it just just come to you randomly? The, the, oh, I'll say it was a bunch of things, but one of the main ones were basically cool. I'm a Muslim. I come from a very good household. If I do this music thing, it's gonna get to a stage where you're going to get booked out to perform in different places and it comes with a lot of different things. Yeah. For me, I know I'm a family man. I know I want to grow up to get married one day. It's like, how can I live with that reputation, if that makes sense? Yeah. And then be out in the park with my kids and my wife and the people mm. might be asking me for a picture because I'm that rapper. I was never that big, don't get twisted. Yeah. But for my age, like at 16, I was getting like 100k streams at 16 years old in college. Mm. So... I knew though the path I was going down and the links that I had in the industry, especially if I was to carry on, it would have taken off. But um, yeah, like what what made me stop was knowing like one day I want to be a family man. Yeah. I don't want that to be attached to me. Um, the the sin and the punishment for it, especially, um, and that is something that displeases Allah. I'm not saying that I'm out here doing stopping everything that displeases Allah. Mm -hmm. Obviously, that's the aim. By the end of the day, we're human, we, we, yeah. we're weak. And, you know, um, the best of the uh, people who do wrong, the best of the wrongdoers are those who repent, like it's said in a hadith. So, yeah, man, um, that's what made me stop, just knowing that I have a bigger purpose and this is all temporary and music is such a short career. Like, you'll be shining, you'll be the man up until you're 30 and after 30, unless you're on, like, Drake's level or, mm. you know what I'm trying to say. Yeah. So when you were, so you mentioned that when you was at sixteen you were getting like hundred k streams and stuff like that. Yeah. What did that do to you, like mentally? Because that can affect you in the yeah. way, like, if you're really that young yeah. and you're not fully like matured yet, mm. it can get to your head and you can, like, you could have gone down that path yeah, like, yeah, fully, fully completely yeah, yeah. and you could have forgot about the dinner and everything. Yeah. Obviously, after that, you had that inside you yeah. that always like shone through. But how do you think that affects people, like, if they especially get it at that young age and it can change them? Like we've seen it, like, in the industry, industries and stuff. And yeah. Um, I feel like anything that comes quick isn't worth having. Mm -hmm. And um, if I was, t uh, at a time, I didn't, I, l I loved it, don't get me wrong. But for me, it wasn't more so the buzz or whatever, because my buzz wasn't even that big. It was just like whenever I drop a track, people would listen to it, whatever, and after it would die out. Not yeah. die out, but like, I didn't, I wasn't consistent as a musician anyway. Do you get it? Um, but um, to answer your question, I've, I always knew in the back of my mind my dean was more valuable. So I knew this is going to stop one day. Mm -hmm. I can't. What's my mum going to say, bro? Yeah. See me on stage and this and that. And then, do you know what I'm trying to say, bro? It's, yeah. it's, it's, I was basically living the moment for, for as long as I could. But I knew that one day it was going to stop. Okay, yeah. Because as you said, you, you know, it's, it's played out yeah. in the way you want it to because you left that and you got something better. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? You left that and you found a different path. Yeah, for sure. You can think in that moment, you might think, okay, now if I don't do this, yeah. what else can I do? You might have thought, like you said at that point when you were like, doing like multiple jobs, you must have thought, like, what's my, what else can yeah. I do? Like, how am I going to make money, yeah. basically? How am I going to be successful? Yeah, for sure. And it's even a verse in the Quran where Allah says, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلَّهُ مَخْرَجًا وَيَرْزُقُهُ مِنْ حَيْثُ لَا يَحْتَسِبْ Anybody who comes with the fear of Allah or the awareness of Allah, He will find a way out for them and He will enrich them from ways and avenues in which they couldn't have imagined. Mm. 
So for me, not to say that my belief was I was pious or anything, and uh, I feared Allah so much to the point where this is the sole reason why I stopped it. Of course, it's one of the the main reason why I stopped is obviously for for the deen. But at the same time, it's like I knew that this is not something who represents me, my values, my morals type of thing. So I stopped it. And then it, in a time it didn't make sense because I was just working jobs, kind of scraping for money type of thing. Mm. But then later on now in the position I'm at now, it all makes perfect sense. Yeah. And I feel like this is Allah's way of telling me, look, look what I had waiting for you type of thing. Yeah, yeah. So, in t- yeah, alhamdulillah, man, you know, it's uh, like I've said in my previous few podcasts and stuff as well, like, you know, with the guests like we discussed, like it's just Islam is the guideline there. Like as long as you have the guideline, because if you don't have that, mm. then you're gonna go in like as yeah, like any, sure. any 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 direction, and there's no control in that. But when you have Islam, you'll always if you have that feeling in you, yeah. even you're doing the worst thing, you'll always like revert back to. If you have that guilt, yeah. that's what can drive you towards. For sure, it's like you know. my bro, Muslim Bilal. What he says, he says in one of his um, lines of poetry, he says, "Imagine a football team without a manager, mm. or a country with no leader." Imagine a church with no preacher or a yeah. class with no teacher. Yeah. Yeah. It's a crazy thing. Crazy thing yeah, you gotta live like you gotta live a life by order mm-hmm. in order for you to feel like there's a sense of you know, boundary involved. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because you know there's there's a there's a there's a line. You can't cross that line and there's I I, 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 I um compared to like like a compass you know if you have yeah. a compass you know where you're going mm-hmm. you follow the compass yeah you're just going in one that's direction it. but for sure. if you don't have the compass you're yeah. going to be lost, lost. Gonna go. yep, yep, so sure. alhamdulillah man like you know you found your way through that and then got to you know where you are now alhamdulillah so did you ever have a, ch- a time where like you left that behind but you was close to fall back into it yeah yeah like in 2019 i think it was or 20 2020 i made a post saying yo guys i'm gonna start making music again unfollow me if that's not something you want to hear okay yeah literally i was I, I was actually gonna go back into it it was a point it was at a point where i was very low in my iman my faith was very weak at that point and i understand why it's because i was sitting a lot i was doing things that i wasn't supposed to be doing and it's a verse in the quran where allah tells us that any problem that strikes you in your life is because of your own sin mm. you know what i mean so yeah. I, at the time i obviously couldn't see it but yeah, um, looking back now, it's like I was very, I was in a really, really low place for me to even think of that, you know, just forget the public sinning, number one. Like number two, it's like you're really about to put yourself in a position where people are going to listen to your tracks and potentially be misguided by it. Although I wasn't, I never had crazy lyrics talking mad stuff. Yeah. It was more like conscious and this, that and the other anyways. But it's like, imagine my speech is the reason for somebody to divert and deviate from the path of Allah. Mm-hmm. So... Yeah. I never saw it like that back then because obviously when you're low, when you're in a place of vulnerability, you're blinded. You can't see mm-hmm. the truth from falsehood. So looking at it now, not to say that I'm on, up on truth now, inshallah I am. But looking back now, it's like, damn, I was in a very low place for me to even have the capacity to think like that, for it, for it to even be a thought. Yeah, man. Um, there's a lot of things that I've done as well that I can't really mention on here that, I say to myself, like, I was in a mad low place. Like, how did I even turn to that type of thing? But alhamdulillah, uh, Allah, I feel like Allah's always protected me. And he's always allowed me not to go the extra step. Yeah. Okay. So when you when you said you pen- you posted that on your story, what, like, did you, like, obviously you didn't, you didn't, you did follow through or you didn't follow through? You, Eventually what, what I didn't, but I was in a studio, bro. I was making music, like, okay. yeah, because I got a studio in my house as well. Mm-hmm. So I've got a studio in my house and especially because I mix and master my own stuff it's very easy it's very accessible to me all I've got to do is open my laptop the mic's already connected the speakers are up mm. yeah man Yeah. did you ever go into like uh, like you know Nasheeds and stuff like that yeah back in the days okay uh, back in the days I did and even till now I, I write poetry till now I wouldn't call it Nasheed it's more so like just my life my experiences in a form of words yeah, because it's still uh, your passion, right? It's just yeah. it's like a hobby. You can still do it. Yeah, yeah. but it's not, it's not just it, like, yeah, yeah, exactly it's that. It's, a, it's, a, it's, it's my biggest hobby. Writing is my biggest hobby. Num- number one out of all of them. Okay. Yeah, and I've got like a, a few, like I said to you, like in terms of hobbies, I'm shambles. I've got so many different hobbies. But number one, like if you told me scrap everything, have one, writing for sure, making poetry and words. And back then it was rap, but... Yeah, writing for me very because it's, it's it's a form of art. It's the way I express myself. Like I'm, I'm not the greatest at speaking on the spot. 
although some people may differ but um i know myself i know i'm not the greatest at speaking on the spot and using certain vocabulary but if you give me time to actually put my thoughts into words on a paper yeah. i can do it yeah and describe it's, it's, it's very a blank, very accurately it's a blank canvas and it's like yeah. art, you said yeah bro. It's, uh, a lot of that and even even the videography it's like it's like being creative so there's a lot of that can bring you i can bring out sparks and you can mm-hmm. bring out a lot of different things mm-hmm. so you know it's really it's really good that you have those as hobbies because you know that's your experiences and you can learn from it and you can grow um keep growing basically um so yeah so after that then you've stopped like kind of like not stopped the videography like you stopped this and you like mm. the music as well and then i think i don't know where i saw it i think i was on in- instagram somewhere but you said when you work for the estate a- estate agent that you mentioned just now as well so that was just before you started the trading right no i was i was trading at the time oh you was trading yeah. oh yeah you said you was when you was working yeah, yeah, you yeah. was you was trading during yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah yeah but you started it before you way went before, into the yeah, job yeah, yeah okay. way before. i started i started trading in 2020 early 2020 okay so when was it that you went to that job then uh 2021 yeah okay so how did you how did you get into trading basically how so lockdown i was living with a few friends of mine mm-hmm. and then one of them was a trader and he was already making a good amount of money and he'll show us yeah yeah so in my head i was thinking like okay this is amazing like there's a way to make money without speaking to anybody cool and when i was 16 I was scheduled to meet up with someone who was already involved in trading, but I just never got around to doing it. So I I knew about trading since I was 16. Mm -hmm. And at the time living with my friends, I was like, what, 19, 20? So um, then I, um, because one of my friends who was living with us was a trader, I started asking questions. And another one of my friends as well, he was trading from before. Um, I started asking questions and they were showing me like basic stuff on, on the chart. Then I watched the playlist of one guy called Adam Koo didn't really understand what he was saying too tough i watched like six videos maybe and then after i just you know when you get recommended stuff on youtube yeah, yeah you're watching this guy and that guy and that guy i started watching loads of different traders and i started getting into trading practicing um losing a lot of money blowing accounts um in my first year i actually lost 7k of my own money okay. um over time and yeah like i'm someone who likes to figure things out so i didn't quit when i lost money i was like okay cool I know this clearly works because I've met people who I lived with personally that it works for and I've seen people online that it works for. Mm -hmm. Um, So let me not kind of stop at this point here. Let me carry on, see it through. And inshallah, if it's meant to be, it's meant to be. And yeah, that's, I got into trading in 2020 early. Okay, okay. So how did that affect you, like losing that money? Because you mentioned that, you know, you've struggled growing up and stuff. Like it can can really affect people. So, you know, depending on circumstances and stuff, of course, like that might force someone to quit, like you said course yeah um, you feel you feel very low you feel you feel you start to feel depressed you think to yourself what am i doing like is this even going to work type of thing um after each and every time you take a loss for example you, you might deposit 500 pounds and over a week or two weeks whatever it may be you might lose all of it and you think to yourself like what's going on here mm-hmm. um but then over time when i looked at how much i lost and i saw 7k i never felt anything because of you have to remember at the same time I was conditioning my mind, listening to audio books, listening to traders experiences like and he would say like after your first year, when you take a look back at your history and your profits and your losses, like you're going to be in loss and that's just going to shape you into your next year and your next year and, your, and your, the year after that. So for me, it was kind of like it was bittersweet because bitter because I lost money, but sweet because I knew that I'm very, very close to seeing profitability and consistency um and yeah that's 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 how losses made me feel but obviously now trading is a lot different because there's prop firms propriety firms aka prop firms that are willing to fund you big capital if only you can prove that you know how to trade within correct risk management less than you know one percent risk for example on a trade or 0.5 percent whatever whatever you're um comfortable with so that's a lot more rewarding because if you lose any of their capital you're not liable for any losses Mm -hmm. they just want to see can you consistently make profit and yeah they pay you like what 75 percent 80 percent 85 percent you get paid every two weeks so if you were to make 10 percent on a 100k account that's 10k you've made for that month Mm -hmm. as opposed to losing 70k in an entire year and putting in change like 200 pound 500 pound losing it it's not it doesn't work long term because uh, humans naturally you have the fear of missing out you have you know, your mind is psychologically attached to your nine to five earnings. You're saying to yourself, bro, I make 2K from working my nine to five job. I make it 1K, 1.5K and I can't even make 1.5K trading the markets. What's going on here? Mm. Because if you're trading with 200 pound, 
the correct risk management is 1% and anything lower than that. Mm. If you're if you're risking two pounds on a trade, yeah. you're not going to be happy with 20 pound reward. Mm. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. That's what I say to people. Just forget about trading your own capital in the beginning. Do it with the prop firms. Get your eyes used to seeing drawdown, you know, um, make a lot of withdrawals and then use that to fund your personal account. And then from there, trade your own personal account because trading for a prop firm isn't the goal. The goal is to trade your own account and be um, 100% in control of your own money, basically. Mm-hmm. You know? Yeah. So, yeah, that's, that's you know, similar with any, 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 any of the principles like within business and whatever, like business start, you're going to, you know, put in like that kind of money that like you said you made the losses, like you're going to put in that but it's the long term that you see. You see the you don't get the instant gratification mm, from yeah. it. You think the long term, and you mentioned you had the people around you. So how much did that affect you having those people around you? Because if you didn't have anyone around you, you might have fallen into that like not continuing with it. Because you uh-huh. have people around you that are doing it, and you see it, it motivates you, elevates you. Yeah. Because you know what they say, like you know, if you're in the room and you're the start smartest person in the room in the wrong room. Mm-hmm. So how has that helped you? Yeah, it was sense? very, it was very motivating, man. It was very, very motivating. Um, mm. But at the same time. It wasn't long. We never lived with each other for long. So okay. I had to, I left, well, we all left. And then I went back to my mom's house. And then from there, that's when life hit the fan. Because for me, it's like, I've got to start this from scratch now. Mm, okay. And I didn't have the motivation around me anymore. I'm not with my okay. friends anymore. So were, were, were they not still around though in terms of? No, no, it's like some of my friends got married and then okay. some um, moved out, some moved out of the city etc things like that and then yeah um everyone went their separate w- we're still together I ch- like they helped me with Yerim university and stuff yeah. we're all together but in terms of that specific time in my life i came off social media i didn't see anybody and yeah so in terms of motivation the motivation wasn't there from people it was literally me and my screen saying how am i gonna crack this code i need to figure this out Okay, so did you lose a lot of? Um, did you use a lot of? Uh, you, know, you, just, you said you mentioned YouTube videos and stuff. Yeah. Was it more? Did you invest a lot of money into the learning? Or was I, I never had money to buy a course. Okay. If I could go back now, I would definitely buy a course straight away. And I'm not mm-hmm. saying this to you because I have a course. I'm saying this because simply, like, you have to understand, I was fishing for content from every single trading YouTuber you could possibly think of, mm-hmm. trying to mix that with that. I was basically, I was making a cocktail basically. Yeah. of different strategies it doesn't work like you can't mix things you have to just follow one teacher and there's loads of strategies out there that work but you just have to find yourself one teacher who you're going to stick to and learn everything from a to z with that one person and not incorporate anything extra because the moment you start incorporating extra things you never reach a stage of contentment when it comes to trading because you think there's more you always think there's more info 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 it's not info it's just you there's no perfect piece of the puzzle when it comes to trading it's all in your mind. You have to be the perfect version of yourself psychologically. Um, of course, there's an element of technical analysis that's involved to know what you're doing on the charts. Uh, I'm not oblivious to that. But what I'm saying is stop like thinking there's always more strategy hopping, trying to learn from this guy, learn from that guy, learn from that guy, putting it all together. It doesn't work. I never had the money to buy a course. That's why I was just forced to try and find gems in like in a one hour video from a guy talking on YouTube, I'll find like two gems. One timestamp might be 27 minutes, the other timestamp might be 58 minutes, yeah. you see? And I would have to write down those two things and then try and possibly hope to pan it. Because what they'll do is they'll give you a lot of free content, then they'll upsell you on a course. Mm-hmm. Whenever they're upsold, I'm like, oh, I, don't have, I don't have money to buy this. Yeah. You know I mean? But there, there, there would be a, a lot of people that were in your city, like the situation you was in, mm. that would be in right now, they don't have the money for it. Yeah. So would you recommend doing the same thing that you did? No. Or? So what would they do if they had generally had no Use money? your job, mm-hmm. go grind for it, save up and buy a course. Mm-hmm. Forget mine, don't buy mine. Yeah. Just go buy a course. Okay, so obviously, um, how would you, what would you advise them in what course to buy us in, in terms of what to look out for? Because obviously there's there's a lot of, uh, you know, energy around it's the, trading. A very bad stigma. Yeah, yeah, there's a lot of stigma. Yeah. And I've experienced it myself from my personal sure. experience. Yeah. It just was like three, four, two, three years ago. Yeah. Uh, a lot of people would be messaging me about that and I was just like, turned away from it yeah. and I didn't want to get involved in it at all um, and you know it's just not something that's interesting it's just not for me but for sure. at that and that's, time that's, it that's, was that's special as well because yeah. uh, sorry bro I just want to no highlight worries. this point because people think it's for everyone mm. it's not for everyone some people look at me some of my friends look at me and say yo what's the trading thing saying but I already know this guy's character inside out he's yeah. not going to stay consistent in this yeah. he's going to 
like you know what I mean, bro. You really have to be thick skinned to thrive in trading and not give up. As cliche as it sounds, it's not for everyone. Mm. That's why I say, like, to to answer your question, I would say the checklist in terms of what to look for. Number one, is this person that you're about to buy, um, is the person that you're about you're about to buy a course from trustworthy? Mm-hmm. in the trading community or just in general anyway have, do people have good things to say about him or bad things to say about him mm-hmm. or her um, number two does he have the results that you want has he shown live profits has he shown him trading has he shown him doing a market breakdown to show exactly like that he knows how to analyze a chart himself uh, number three would be does he offer a good support system it sounds like I'm just speaking about Yerima University yeah I'm sorry, guys, but this is actually this is the checklist, and if this so you're speaking from experience, though, so yeah, yeah, bro, like like this is what we offer anyway. Do you get it? Mm-hmm. But like I said to you, if don't sign up to mine if you don't. If this is not a sales pitch, you know. Um, look for a good support system where people can help you. Number four, um, someone that speaks very very strictly about risk management, and they're not telling you and they're not using terms like yeah do you want to get rich quick or do you want to buy a Lambo in three months or do you want to buy do you get what I'm trying to say like look for someone who kind of puts you off and doesn't make you hear what you want mm. like isn't they'll tell you okay look guys trading as a side hustle in the beginning it's going to take a lot of hard work a lot of effort a lot of dedication but when you do make it to the other side it's very rewarding it's very rewarding and it can make you quit your job etc over time not straight away mm-hmm. look for someone and pay very close attention to the words that people use when they're selling you on something, you know, um, take your time. Like, as in, like, if someone uses the word, "Do you want to quit your job in the next six months?" or "Do you do you want to make one k to three k every single month?" Mm. Avoid it because it's nonsense. It's not gonna happen. Yeah, um, if someone's pitching that to you, so that's what I would say. I'll say pay very close attention to the key words that people use when they're trying to invite you to the course. And um, number five, reviews. Ask people, how do you find it? Mm. How have you found it? Is it good? Is it worth it? L- try and see if people have actually changed their life from this course. Yeah, that's what I'll say. Okay. The checklist. So yeah, you're obviously s- speaking from experience, you know, the things that you learn and then the mistakes that you made. And uh, you know what someone that wants to learn should be looking for kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, you know, obviously, you know, you know that and you've done that with uni- Uremi University. Yeah. Um, but obviously, as we were discussing the stigma, I think from my point of view, so I'm, I've never done trading in my life. And from I've seen it from the outside, so I can give my opinion in terms of what I've seen it as. So there'll be people selling these pyramid schemes, whatever it is. But the people that are getting into it, they see it. Pyramid, they, sc- called pyramid schemes or courses? Well, you know, they 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 they're trying to sell you the signals and stuff like that. Or? Okay, because you, do you are you clued up about trading or? Not at all. <laughs> okay, cool. So let me let me clarify just just to sh- make yeah. it clear for you. So the, there's pyramid schemes in terms of like companies like that tell you we're going to teach you how to trade okay. and at the end of the day they just, they just get you to sign up a bunch of people okay. but there's no trading involved or there's very little okay. little trading involved there's some people that are genuine amongst that circle but overall the company's focus isn't trading so that's a pyramid scheme mm-hmm. but then you've got actual traders who have courses they might be good like I've got friends who have signals right mm-hmm. and they do well um, so for example they might have a course they may be amazing traders themselves they may sell, sell signals obviously you have to be regulated to sell signals or whatever and qualified um but there's nothing essentially wrong with that from a signal point of view like Yurim university we never give signals we're not mm-hmm. we don't give financial advice we will never give signals we will never tell people how to invest their money or what to do with their money we'll never do that yeah but we do we teach people how to trade but there's other traders who who have a course to teach people how to trade but at the same time they will tell them buy this sell this invest in that invest in this so that's essentially there's nothing wrong with that but the problem arises when the person doesn't even know how to trade and they're giving signals just because people are paying a subscription of £100 a month yeah. or £200 a month, whatever it may be. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah, yeah. So I just wanted to, because you yeah, said yeah. you don't know about, that's yeah, why yeah. I wanted no, to give you there. That, exactly. So I'm, yeah. I'm saying it from a perspective that I don't know. So yeah. I need you to educate me on yeah, it. Yeah, of course, of course. Yeah, yeah. So this is what I saw when I was coming up like a few years ago and then I saw that these kind of, so the two, two things, so I so, saw so both of them basically. Yeah. And like, on the outside when you're looking in and people getting into it a lot of them are thinking especially in this day and age of social media they're thinking get rich quick which is what you mentioned yep. but there's never a such thing in business as get rich quick yep. so obviously in trading it's going to be the same yep. but the people look at it they might think that way and then they get 
into these the premise scheme or whatever it is yeah. and it's not the yeah. same as what it should be so obviously you're mentioning what you do slightly different and is it that you trying to create that change in that in that in that sense um i would say of course like by the end of the day i'm one man i'm not superman i can't change mm-hmm. the whole industry yeah um because at the end of the day people are always going to think what they want to think yeah. and especially if someone has a stigma or they've got a trauma from being scammed by someone etc they're still going to be stuck in their ways for a very long time until they can find someone that, to trust basically yeah i'm not trying to be the guy that people can trust mm-hmm. i'm saying to you just look for yourself if you trust me you trust me if you don't it's up to you i'm not going to tell you to trust me yeah because i think it's pretty evident when you see what we do for our students like we had an event last week I literally spent 7k just on gifts given back to students paying for the exams to take a to trade for a firm giving someone an entire trading setup delivering it hand delivering it to his door and his dad opening a door and we're giving him a, a, an entire dual monitor setup gaming desk chair mm-hmm. helping him enhance his trading you know um offering one-to-ones in a one-time fee you know my course is a 499 one-time payment no monthly subscription and you can literally jump on a call with me every Sunday. I do a market breakdown Zoom call throughout the week. I do support calls. Where I can come on a, uh, on a Zoom call. People jump in, ask any questions. I've got a 24-hour support chat where questions are getting answered literally right now as we speak, you know. Um, and yeah, like, I, I wouldn't, I'm not trying to be the guy to say, hey guys, I'm coming to save the industry. But what I can say is that it's, it's impacting a lot of people and it's working. Yeah. yeah. As you said, yeah, you're one person and, you know, you can do as much as you can. Yeah. But... Is still creating that change. Yeah. You know, you're you're you you're creating a driving force yeah. essentially. So someone else, one of your students maybe, maybe maybe a lot of your students, they might yeah. see that, they might learn from you. Then they go on to the, their own version, and you For know, sure. it just multiplies. And then maybe it will get to a point where there's the stigma is reduced yeah. quite significantly, and people know the differences because there's not a lot of education on there. Mm-hmm. It's just people just out there and just just selling the course yeah. or something like that. Sure. So you know, it can be quite. Uh, difficult for people to get into it. Mm. So, in terms of uh, Urumi University itself, mm. um, what was the sole purpose of starting it? Um, the sole purpose of starting it, number one, is to not gatekeep information to myself that has allowed me to make money. Number two, it's a business that has good money. Yeah. Straight up. If you have knowledge, monetize it, teach. You can make money out of it. <coughs> okay. So, is it obviously a part of the te- the teaching yeah. that you enjoy as well yeah oh i love teaching yeah love it i i didn't know i loved teaching until i started yurim university and like i said to you before like when i was speaking to my friend um before i launched yurim university he was actually one of the, one of the people that inspired me to launch it because i wasn't going to do it mm-hmm. and he said to me if you have the knowledge and it's working for you why are you gatekeeping this information type of thing not that i was my intention was to gatekeep my intention was look like to teach this I would have had to have I don't know 10 million pounds in my name or something Mm -hmm. I always thought yeah to teach something like that you need to be already gone clear 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 when in reality it's like knowledge isn't attached to money of course you would have had to have made a certain amount of money um, from trading before you start to teach which is why like I've I've way before i started a course i was already making income from trading very good income from trading um and like i mentioned on other podcasts like seeing 10k floating profit almost every single day shows you that okay cool this guy knows what he's doing to a certain level of of, of, of um to a certain level so yeah like i started i started a course like one year after i figured it out mm-hmm. I, could, I didn't start a course straight away in my journey of figuring it out but i started a course one year after like figuring out my strategy figuring out my psychology etc so yeah that's yeah like you know what they say like you know you you won't know until you get into it so you yeah. just threw yourself into the deep end and went on to teaching because there's never there's never such thing as being ready no, no, I, didn't. <coughs> I didn't throw myself in the deep end i didn't start teaching straight away in the same no no, no i mean i mean in the sense that you thought that you that you was worried about starting it so in that sense worried about g- no, let me rephrase that. Maybe I re- I phrased that wrong because okay. I taught my little brother. Okay. And my little brother now, like he's a six-figure trader. Mm-hmm. So for my little brother to do that, I said to myself, hold on. We might have something here. Yeah. Do you get me? So then I started. So the doubt was basically, how are people going to perceive this 
in terms of me. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, cause I've, like, I've done a lot of different things in the past. Um, okay. Like with my jobs, this, that, and the other. Like, um, I was doing YouTube before, so it's like, mm, am I really the kind of character to come on and teach how to make money? Mm-hmm. But then I said to myself, hold on, if it's working for me, why not? Yeah. Actually, literally, why not? Yeah. Then I started it, and alhamdulillah, like, it's, it's it's been going well, man. Yeah, that's what I, I mean. In that sense of throwing yourself into teaching, I mean, in general, not just obviously you've done yeah, what yeah. you've done, mm. but in terms of you you knew your capabilities mm-hmm. but it's until you like when you can teach someone yeah it's like you realize that okay like, yeah. you know what i mean because yeah. every like teacher or motivational speaker that's out there like there was be, would have been a step that they yeah. already had experience yeah but then they started it and then they realized like there's like yes yes new, so you know for me mean? yeah, yeah. I, I get exactly what you're trying to say bro for me it was like i always had leadership okay i always had leadership and john maxwell explains leadership to be influence so in terms of influence, I was always able to kind of speak to my friends and say, "You look, man, there's a crazy idea here. I think we should do this. This is amazing. How does this look? This is good. But I never really unlocked the teaching leadership style to myself mm-hmm. because I thought I never had that until I started to teach. Then I realized, okay, cool. Leadership is influence, but at the same time, you can also be a leader by teaching somebody a skill. Mm-hmm. So that's, I feel like that's a, that's, that's a, a channel in me that I, I wasn't in touch with the teaching because I thought mm-hmm, you know what cool I've taught one person before can I teach 10 20 30 40 100 200 300 do you okay. know what I mean so does that obviously probably does give you some level of personal satisfaction yeah. for like I'm teaching this person mm-hmm. and you know you've mentioned a few times that you've given your course for free and stuff oh, like yeah. that because then that to me shows that it's not about the money of course yeah. the money is the thing that kind of like runs it yeah. so for you to be able to host the event and stuff yeah. like that yeah. you'll be able to you know that kind of goes towards that so it's not about making the money from it it's more about when you're teaching them and if you're giving them free yeah. it's like you want to give them the knowledge yeah. it's not about you know what i mean and mm-hmm. you want to get them to the point where they're yeah. doing trading and they go on yeah you know and people might think there's a catch like bro i had my free event and the course was closed so what gain do i get out of that yeah like um, it's not like a marketing thing where oh my god he's got a free event yeah because now his course is open people are going to see that everyone's going to jump in the course is closed you can't even get in yeah and the thing you're doing is um, correct me if I'm wrong but uh, it's you're teaching these students and then to be able to trade on their own so you're not doing something where they they're relying you. on you they're it's, not really it's, like, it's like university yeah it's, uh, your university is a simple three steps learn apply get funded the same way university is apply learn graduate mm-hmm. okay once you once you've finished your business here well, you don't have no business with me what do you want go make your money live your life live in the real world you know yeah. go start whatever it is you wanted to start like it's not attributed to me i'm okay. just here to teach you the skill once you learn how to fish go and catch fish okay so in terms of your actual uh style of uh the, che- the teaching and the co- the, the teaching and the calls and stuff mm-hmm. you do mm-hmm. how did you was there like a like a business plan behind that or you just yeah yeah of course okay. yeah, yeah like at the end of the day like i take pride in yareem university like it took me a very long time to put together mm-hmm. thought it through very thoroughly um you know I, I, i've made videos deleted videos done them again because i thought you know what this can be more detail taking things out put things in um before launching that is so a lot of trial and error before mm-hmm. launching until i overlooked it and said yeah this is perfect because this is everything that i did to find success in the markets so I'm, I'm, i've put it all into it's in video format so it's a bunch of videos in video format of me my face on screen the charts there teaching you what every single thing on the chart means you can come in with zero knowledge and by the end of the course you will know exactly why the charts are the way they are why the market moves the way it moves so it's in video format and then we we'll also have a discord group so the course isn't the main thing like yeah. the 499 is a membership a one-time fee for the membership you get the course and the discord group where you have an entire community of people that help you out there's a trading questions tab where if you're ever stuck and you want a question answered literally ask the question someone replies to you or the every single weekly zoom call that we do gets recorded so you can watch it if you're at work and you're gonna miss it you can replay it watch it after um i do group q and a's one-to-ones free events so that you again all of that for 499 okay. my f- very close friend he paid 2k for a two-day course in which they, at the end of it, they told him, yeah, if you want to learn more, it's going to be an extra 10K for two days. Yeah. And I'm giving you all, all of this 499, one-time pay, no catch, no monthly subscription, nothing. Okay. So you have, you, you, you allow your students obviously to have direct contact with you as well? Uh, and not in terms of like 
private messages yeah, yeah. in terms of the Discord. Okay, yeah. So anything to do with the Discord, yeah, you can ask yeah. questions. But they, they, you have that when you have the events, they can come up and speak to you. Yeah, but at the same time, it's like yeah. the more Yareem University grows. Remember, I'm only one man, yeah, so yeah. it's like if I've got. 500, 300 mm-hmm. students, 1K, whatever it may be, 5,000 yeah. 5, students, whatever it is, whatever it will be in the future, inshallah, yeah. I can't yeah, speak course. to every single student. Yeah. Because like, you're going to start creating the layers and then you're going to go. No, nah, not even that. It's like yeah. there's not enough minutes in the day. Yeah. Imagine that there's a, there's a thousand students yeah. waiting to speak to me and everyone's going to want at least five minutes. Five times a thousand is what? Yeah. You but get the main, main thing is you're still, you're still the face of it. Like if, Yes. You're still the face of yes. it. It's not like you're, you've yeah. created this thing, now you just left it. Exactly. You've gone away. Yeah. You're not in touch yeah. you know exactly what's going on yeah. in day to day exactly so alhamdulillah which is why over here like just take, take my phone out and show you um, you can see here like um, what do I say here anybody who needs uh, anybody who needs hi everyone I hope you're all well I'll be on zoom right now helping anyone who has questions or stuck on a topic feel free to pop in ask questions whenever you want okay. so that's you personally yeah yeah day before okay. you mean me day before hi everyone hope you're well I'll be on zoom later Helping anyone who has any questions, feel free to pop in. Day before, hi everyone, hope you well. I'll be on Zoom later. Helping anyone who has questions, feel free to pop in and ask any questions. Whatever you need help with, there's no such thing as a stupid question. Every day, like every other day, every two days, free trading workshop. Like and you can see, this is just my Discord. Like every, so yeah, man. If the, the, it's here, innit? If someone wants to utilize it, it's everything someone needs. Yeah, I mean, yeah, it's it's out there, and around the time that I first found out about you is when you just before you started it. So I've seen it, and I was like, okay, like this seems like something quite interesting. Mm. Obviously, I've never been into trading; I never wanted yeah, to get yeah. in trading, but I found it. Yeah. I, I like learning about different businesses, yeah. and obviously coming here today, like I've learned a bit, a little bit. Yeah. Um, and there's always stuff to learn. Like mm-hmm. there's never mm-hmm. anything wrong with learning. Um, and obviously, I think you touched on um in the last podcast as well, um where the brother asked you about. Uh, he said people think that you're flaunting. Yeah. So in in the trading world, as you mentioned, there's a lot of things where people are posing with Lambos and yeah, stuff like yeah, that. Yeah. And the difference I see from my from my perspective in, in yourself is you have, I've always felt this, like there's nothing wrong. I don't think there's anything wrong with flaunting what you've got. If you've got, if you've got a nice car, if you've got a nice, you know, like even as with myself. Mm. Um, but the thing is, if you're trying to sell something or if you're like obviously an entrepreneur business, you should be showing what you're about. If your Instagram is just the cars and yeah. stuff like that, but you're not showing yeah. what you do. Sketchy. Then then it's like it's sketchy. Yeah, yeah. But if you're if you're allowed, if you if you're showing, you're documenting what you're doing. You're obviously you're posting about like Yurimi University. You've got the whole page. You've got everything set up. You're mm-hmm. always talking about it. Mm-hmm. So in that sense, I think you know it's you know people that get scammed by those people. It's, yeah. You know, there's no face to them. Yeah. So um, just to quickly answer that on that, to touch on that topic, um, I think it's very important that you brought it up. When I left that podcast the other day with my friends, um, I actually searched up. What does the word flaunting mean in the Google dictionary? Yeah? Okay. Um, flaunt meaning. Flaunt. Display something, especially in order to provoke envy or admiration or to show defiance. Mm-hmm. Like by me flaunting, that means I'm specifically doing this to make someone envious of me. Mm-hmm. I don't think that's an accurate representation. Yeah. Number one. And number two, it's like you said, bro, um, when there's no face to you when you're a trader it's very sketchy because people don't know say for example someone's got a course but there's no face to them people don't know who's getting their money like who yeah. who, they, who they're paying their money to it's, number one is very sketchy number two if, if i just had a voice nobody would be interested and number three if i never had the results nobody would be interested so let's stop lying and let people stop acting as though you know they're just strictly after information Mm-hmm. You're not after information because, like I said previously, I always say the same thing again. Google, if Google or the internet was the gospel of success, everybody would find answers to becoming successful on Google. Mm-hmm. The reason why you haven't is because you haven't paid for it. You don't value something that you don't pay for. Yeah. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So, in terms of um, flaunting, this like at the end of the day, you have to sh- like seeing is believing. You have to show that it works. Okay, you have to show that it works. Seeing is believing. Let's not be delusional here. And um, for s- for someone like that, I would literally say it comes from a place of comparison. Mm-hmm. You know, they're looking at their life compared to yours and they're thinking, yeah, this guy's got a car, this, that, and the other just to sell his course or whatever. But it's like, bro, don't compare your chapter one to my chapter 10. Yeah, exactly. Because they, your yeah. chapter one is when you're laying the foundations you're putting the cement on the bricks and you're laying them 
You walked in on my chapter 10. My chapter 10 is me when I'm him. I've got here now. Of course, I may have other goals that I have to achieve, but you're now basing a judgment, not seeing my backstory, not seeing where I came from, not seeing my down days. You've come when when everything's sunshine and rainbows. You can't now come here, bro, and, and say, why are you flaunting? Do you get it? Because yeah. at the end of the day, forget me aside. Who, like, what good human being, according to the definition of flaunting, would want to show people what they have to make somebody envious? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Don't make sense. It's just you, you, you're, you're, you're proud of your achievements, right? Yeah. And people see, they'll see, I've mentioned this a few times, people will see the tip of the iceberg. That's it. They see yeah. the tip of the iceberg. Yeah, yeah, they yeah. don't see of course. all, that, all and, those and building blocks behind it. 100 million percent, bro. And, and it's like, sometimes it's not even that you're proud of your achievements. It just might be your life. Mm-hmm. If you're driving a Toyota Prius, like, amazing car. Yeah, Toyota, it lasts very long, very efficient car. People use it for Uber. But if I was driving a Toyota Prius, mm-hmm. people would not say, damn, man, why is this guy flaunting for? Yeah. Why? Yeah. Why? Exactly. It's not. It's not. They, would, they, wouldn't, they wouldn't think that. But that's my life. Mm-hmm. I've, got a Toyota, I've got a Toyota Prius. Yeah. I live... I live maybe in, I don't, know, I don't know, South London, for example, or wh- wherever I may live. Why is it not flaunting now? Mm-hmm. I'm taking snaps in my house. Yeah. I'm taking snaps of my Toyota. I'm taking snaps of, you know, <sighs> my Greggs in the morning. Yeah. Why is that not flaunting? Mm-hmm. But now, when my actual life is me waking up in a penthouse every day, alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. me walking into my McLaren, me going on holiday whenever I want, that's flaunting. Mm-hmm. Yeah. When I've been doing the same thing when I was broke, but you just never thought that was flaunting according to your definition. Yeah, definitely. It's because at that level, it's just normalized. Like, you know, people yeah. think, might think having a church yeah. Prius is, norm- is, is normal. Yeah. But then the thing is, like, so say, for example, you went now, or anyone went now to a third world country, yeah. and you had that church Prius, and they have, they don't even have cars or something. Then if you start posting that, let's say they've, Hypothetically, has yeah. social media. Everyone has social media there. Then you're posting a Toyota Prius. Then they're gonna think that's flaunting. Of course, like in Pakistan, I know Toyota is very big in Pakistan. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Uh, I had a Pakistani friend who came, and he told me, "Yeah, well, Toyotas in Pakistan is is the real deal." Apparently, I'm yeah. not sure. You can you're Pakistani, so you can tell yeah, me. Yeah, like like a four by four. Like yeah, like yeah. something like that. That's respected apparently over there. Mm. So, like, imagine on the flip side now, bro. Imagine I'm driving in my McLaren, and Maghrib time comes. Am I not going to go to the masjid because I'm ashamed of parking my McLaren outside the mosque? Mm-hmm. What do I do? You have to park. You have to. But like, you're going to pray. It like, doesn't matter what you're coming in. It's just a, it's a vehicle. Do you get it? Yeah. But people might now come out and say, oh, why are you bringing the McLaren to the mosque? Yeah. Do I, do I not bring the car and miss my salah yeah. in Jama'ah, which has exactly. s- such a great reward? Or do I now just think about what people are going to think? I say to myself, yeah, man, let me just pray at home because I don't want to park the car here, mm-hmm. you know? And if I park it too far, it might be a bit dangerous. I can't really, I don't have my eyes on the car. It's an expensive car. People might scratch it. And then it might, it, the repair will be a lot. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Like, I don't want to have to think about these things. Mm-hmm. And yeah. then that, it just goes to show, like, some people are not, like, it comes from, and I understand, like, you have to stay protected. You have to do your adhkar. You have to do your, um, um, you have to read a lot of dua, Quran, to stay protected. But at the same time, it comes from a place of envy. Mm-hmm. people would walk out of the, not everybody of course our religion is beautiful but a lot of people would walk out of the masjid looking at your car parked outside thinking is this guy trying to flex mm-hmm. bro I'm just trying to pray my salah yeah. and, and leave this place yeah. you get what I'm trying to say simple as that man to be honest yeah. like you know people always talk um, obviously and even on the flip side of that say you took your took your car now somewhere that's wealthy and they all have supercars yes and then you're going to be I've there, done that going to be a normal person They're if I've done that in Dubai yeah they're not even looking twice. Yeah. They won't look twice because they see every day. Yeah. <laughs> it's the norms of that country, which I also understand over here, like with the color of my car, etc. It's very punchy. It's out there. It's, ex- yeah. it's extravagant, for example. I get it. Like people are going to look. I understand that. It's, it's The car is a neck breaker. People break necks. Mm-hmm. Like people break their necks. But I'm not going to, you know, let that be at the expense of me missing my salah in the masjid. Yeah. If I can, obviously. I think that's really important. And a lot of people that become highly successful are entrepreneurs. They don't listen to what others think, like what others say. What the general public that yeah. says, you know, you know, you get the good, you get the bad. But people always talk, no matter what you're doing. Yeah. 
you're flaunting, you're not flaunting, you're doing mm-hmm. this, you're not, you know, you 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 have a nice car, you don't have a nice car. There will be some someone will always say something. Yeah. So then you just gotta you just gotta block that out. Sure. How have you how have you found that dealing with that people that always talk and obviously another reason sometimes that you might wanna speak on topics yeah. just to, you know, uh clarify and you yeah. know give your give your version out there yeah. because you know this is a good way to express yourself yeah you know? literally so um I, i'll be honest bro i'm used to it now um i'm used to people speaking on my name and everyone's trying to have their moment for example and literally just here as as i was walking up to this place mm-hmm. at what 207 p.m my friend messaged me saying read your other card bro hella man pocket watching and hating someone just put up a tweet saying it's a, it was a meme, innit? It was a meme of these traders that don't know what they're talking about. Oh, okay. Saying, oh my God, yeah. And then after this, you buy here and you sell here. And the caption was um, a visual representation of Yerimi University, for example. Oh. But the guy's not even in there. And the guy's verified, like, but he's only got three views. I don't know how that works. Probably paid for his verification. Yeah, yeah. But, like, I'm, I'm used to people speaking on me. And it doesn't, you have to be, you have to know yourself. You have to be so sure of yourself, so confident of yourself, like, the lion doesn't roar. You know when a dog barks. Mm-hmm. Not to call someone a dog, yeah. but hey, if the shoe fits, then <laughs> you can identify as whatever you like nowadays, right? Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> like, you just you have to be sure of yourself. Don't be arrogant. Be humble. Help people. Don't look down on people. But at the same time, be confident in yourself and take pride in your product. These people will always have opinions online. Nobody has ever come to me saying, what are you doing with your room? Because they know. Like they know I'm not that guy. They know, you know, I'm, I like to believe I'm a trustworthy individual. I've never done anybody dirty. Do you get what I'm trying to say? That's why nobody comes to me in public and says anything like that. Mm-hmm. You know, it, will I stumble across a hater one day? Probably. But um, I just know, like, I'm so sure of myself. I'm sure, so sure of my product, my service, that nobody can speak bad of it. And if they do, it's because they already had the agenda against me, number one. Or number two, they were just searching for a get rich quick scheme and when they found out this is no get rich quick mm-hmm. they probably get upset because they had lambo dreams of three weeks but it's not it's real life it's not real life yeah so when you've had these people talking to him haters have you ever had a time where it's affected you actually affected yeah you? for sure okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 there was there was a time this was, was my first ever encounter to like public hate for example mm-hmm. and yeah like someone made a twitter thread accusing me of something that I didn't do scam basically but I never scammed someone in my life but mm-hmm. I understand this is what's going to come with it as you move up the ladder people are going to try and say you know what I went to school with this guy yeah. or I went to the mosque with this guy or I went football with this guy or I went here with this guy I've been here like, this guy's the same age as me mm. they, they, they might feel a certain way if they feel as though you've surpassed them or they might still be in the same position and you've excelled for example and you know this is the dunya like Allah can humble you Allah can take away everything that I have now and put me back to square one Allah can elevate someone who was once in a position that I was in do you get it that's why you should never attach yourself to the dunya hold the dunya in your hand and not in your heart and um, yeah so when it, when it comes to that like, like I said it's, it comes back down to being sure of yourself I was very sure of myself and I know that I've never I can sleep peacefully at night because I know I've done no one wrong mm-hmm. But there's someone out there who thinks they know me and they think I've come up with some false accusations. But it's like, over time, obviously, it, at the time, I was like, oh, like people are actually, mm. they're actually out here trying to get you like that and spreading lies. Yeah. But when, you, when you're sure of yourself, when you've got your circle around you who know you, who know the real you, it's like, they, they know it's nonsense. It's absolute nonsense, but yeah. Yeah, it's crazy that people, the kind of people that do that, like, you know, they're always... They're never going to be satisfied. Hating on someone yeah. is never going to give you satisfaction or being envious or jealous yeah. of someone. It's always going to have that little feeling in your heart. Mm-hmm. And the crazy thing is, especially it's been accelerated a lot with social media, is that, for example, someone who doesn't know you, let's say, for example, because you mentioned a Twitter thread and I've thought about this, like, let's say, for example, I come across you first on a Twitter thread, someone slandering your name. Mm. Why am I going to think instantly? Straight away, first impression. First impression. Yeah. I'm going to think, oh, like, who's this guy? Yeah. I see him. I was like, oh. Then I see you again. I'm like, oh, that's the first yeah. impression I had of him. Yeah. Like, this guy's dodgy. Yeah. But people got to understand, you know, you got to oh, form your own perception based on information you yeah. receive. Of course. You know, it can be quite difficult. And the social media these days, for example, like Twitter, for, let's say they had 100 likes or something. People mm. see like it has so many likes. That means it must be right. Of course, yeah. You know what I mean? And not to bring the Quran into it again, but it's like people always think the majority are correct. Yeah. In the Quran, Allah says, وَإِن تُطِعْ أَكْثَرَ مَنْ فِي الْأَرْضِ يُضِلُّكَ عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ 
If you was to follow the majority of people on earth, they will misguide you from the path of Allah. Not to say social media and Islam is, is there's a correlation, but yeah. you can take a benefit from that and apply yeah. it to the dunya and say, you know what? Definitely. Maybe the majority aren't always right. Mm -hmm. That makes sense. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Uh, bro, even in the trading industry, it's very toxic. One guy made a whole TikTok thread about me. Talk, and he starts his video by saying, oh, my name is this. I've been trading for 10 years. He's in some box of a room. And you can just tell that the guy is hating because he hasn't achieved anything with trading in 10 years. Mm -hmm. But that's what I can get from it anyway. His entire page is built off of basically just reviewing people's courses or whatever, this, that, and the other, and saying, is this a scam? Is this legit? And then in the link in his bio, he's got the cheek to charge 2.5K for his own course. Yeah. That's absolutely garbage. I mean, he's getting trying to get publicity up. And I'm charging four nine nine. Yeah, like bro. And then, alhamdulillah, like I built a strong army of people that I've helped. So they're always gonna show me love. Yeah. I mean, it backfired in his comments. So okay. yeah. Um, but it's one of them was where I don't entertain these things. Like someone makes a video about me, I'm not gonna make a response to you. Like, just bro, do your thing. Yeah. My th my ship is sailing. Okay, but would you make a response if that video went viral? The, the video did go viral. Oh, did it? How yeah. many views did it? Have? I don't know, but there, there was another one that went viral okay. as well, and it just said something like scammer, for example, okay. and it went viral. But in the comments, people are like show proof. Yeah, because you know in yourself, and it goes back yeah. to the thing where you talk about Islam, like you know, even the thing that you mentioned about uh, bringing your car to the masjid and stuff, yeah. like you have to trust in Allah. Yeah. That's all you need to worry yeah. about. Every person yeah. gives yeah. his yeah. two yeah. cents and talk mm -hmm. all the time. But uh, as long as you have that, then. Yeah. What more do you need? Yeah. Because uh, not everything is done yet as we spoke. For about, sure, and know? even like a part of that is like friendships as well. Because as much as some people are your friends, when people are seeing you like on the FYP, for example, and someone labeling you as a scam or whatever, mm -hmm. even though they have no proof, and everyone in the comments is saying it's basically backfired, it's backfired on them basically. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Sometimes when people see that and that stigma of you and people assuming it's of you, it can lead to like maybe people that you thought were friends. You know you can feel it when someone's like kind of doubting you. Yeah, yeah. But then it's like, it's sad to see, but at the same time it helps you realize who's your real friend and who's not. Mm -hmm. Do you get it? Because yeah. it's like, yo, you know me. Well, sorry, the people that know me don't think that. But it's like, yo, like we we used to chill back in the days or whatever. How you can see that people's opinions are getting to them. Mm -hmm. People's opinions of me are getting to them, and not to say that like, everyone thinks, bro, like, alhamdulillah, bro, I don't get no hate. Maybe like out of a hundred percent, I've only got two like less than. I've only got two two hate videos, for example. Yeah, that's it. Okay. No one else because they know like, bro, look at my Discord. The amount of six figure students, like I said in my event the other day, I might have to make a sub branch called Yerimi Maternity because we give birth to six figure traders straight away, like not straight away, but like, do you get what I'm trying to say? Like mm. our students are seeing results, so there's there's only so much you can speak on someone. Until you realize, damn, they're actually legit. I'm not going to tell you I'm legit. Come see it for see yourself. yourself yeah, Read yeah. the reviews. Look at the reviews. Don't chat to me. Just you do your own research. Yeah, yeah. yeah so it's, 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 it's part and parcel of what comes with being, you know, successful, essentially. Like, even even the biggest people in the world that are doing something good, they will have the haters. There will be videos about them and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's a, it's, it's a part of part of where it is. And you just got to, you know, be in, 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 in your path, you know, knowing what you need to do. Um, so I just wanted to touch on again into the teaching bit. It kind of goes into it. So like creating opportunity in creating opportunities for people. Is that something that's really important to you? For sure. It's very important to me because we know, especially with the cost of living in the UK, mm -hmm. my belly's rumbling. I'm hungry. Um, especially with the cost of living in the UK, a nine to five just ain't cutting it anymore. You know, um, it's pretty much enough just to scrape, m make ends meet, basically. Um, so for me, it's like I feel like now that I've kind of figured out this puzzle of trading, it's almost upon me to teach people. Mm. Obviously, at a cost. I'm not saying, hey, look at me, I'm the savior. At the end of the day, it's my business. I'm going to make money from teaching, yeah. of course. Yeah. It's not free. But um, part, of me, part of me is also like, you know what? This is to to help people. It's a split intention. Number one, to help people. Number two, to make money from it. Um, and yeah, so for me, I, I do feel a sense of being compelled to teach people. Um, I feel like it's a duty upon me. Um, as Muslims, especially like, obviously there's differences of opinion that people have, but for the people that do follow the opinion, I feel like it's upon me to help them achieve 
better finances because when people think of Islam as yeah that's it you're meant to live poor for the rest yeah. of your life and obviously the, the poor people will enter Jannah first but at the end of the day like you have to take your means like take take um you know take what's written for you from this dunya um don't settle for a mediocre life maybe if maybe if, a, if you're striving for wealth you can now use that to benefit a large number of people you know um money is a very very powerful tool and if it's used correctly it can be the reason why you do enter gender mm-hmm. yeah so like you know um spoke about it uh previously as well um in our, in our podcast uh the good friend Abu Musa as well he's, yeah, he's yeah. mentioned every every okay. every muslim you know regardless if you're muslim every human but every muslim he's because he's specifically for the asian muslim community like mm-hmm. every muslim should at least try to do it because there's nothing that says that you know be, islam teaches you to yeah. you know be you know get get to that point mm-hmm. and obviously the the, the creating opportunities bit is like obviously you're charging for it but it's 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 a form of charity you're helping people mm-hmm. you're helping them get a better life you know so is that is that something you know that you that you uh, engage in like ch- charity not charity work specifically like giving money to people but helping people other than dream university uh yeah like, i don't really like to touch on that stuff okay. i feel like some stuff should be kept private but in t- like it's, it's very you you have to help people in life mm-hmm. yeah so in terms of that what's your ultimate goal in life like in this within this dunya? obviously we're talking you can touch on yeah. the hereafter as well uh, yeah um, but what's your what's your ultimate goal what's driving you at this current moment um, to success so i feel like it changes it comes in waves for example when i was first getting started my aim was to be financially comfortable to have my own place um you know not have to worry about money drive a nice car you know fix my life basically pay off my debts that was my aim so now that i've done that i feel like the next wave is to settle down get married have children um get involved in a lot more humanitarian work around the world okay. visit because i used to, i've been to the rohingya refugee camp twice i've been to gambia i've been to all these different places like refugee camps orphanages and stuff i want to do more of that mm-hmm. and i feel like because in the past few years i've been out of the game if you want to call it that just focused on entrepreneurship now is the time where i want to get back into that stuff there and yeah just help build orphanages around the world and yeah just really utilize what allah has blessed me with you know in mm-hmm. the correct ways and i don't want to get into details obviously i'm not going to say what i've done or what i do yeah or what i want to do but yeah that's what i want to be involved in inshallah alhamdulillah like you know that's that's the biggest thing uh that you do it without you don't yeah. need to tell anyone yeah that's the true intention of your if i've done it yeah 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 if you've done yeah. it yeah. Uh, but you know I, I, there's nothing wrong with showing it because yeah. you know you can you can you can inspire people to, to yeah, go yeah, towards yeah. that but yeah. at the same time you know if you don't want to uh speak yeah. about it that shows yeah, yeah, your, your, your true intentions yeah, yeah. alhamdulillah I mean, you mentioned you've been out of the game so per se uh for a few years but those few things go hand in hand being an entrepreneur and also giving back to community not just charity just giving back to people in general they don't have to be poor essentially but all of that is combined but it goes hand in hand because you can't build a school mm-hmm. without any money you can't build an orphanage without yeah. any money but that's what you get to where Allah, Allah, Allah has provided you like mm. get to that point where you're able to do these things and I think it's really important and I always speak about it with a lot of the guests that I have on and a lot of them do like want to do those things and that's like their their things that they want to do because mm. that gives you the ultimate satisfaction and it's going to give you the benefit in the hereafter yep. inshallah so inshallah. you know it's a, it's, a, it's a very important thing I think uh, you know to have um, but yeah there was a quote that said whatever you repent from will be placed in front of you to test your sincerity mm. the same way whatever wealth you're blessed with will be placed in front of you to test what you're going to do with it mm-hmm. okay so i've got i've got one thing for you so do you think money is the root of all evil yes or no no but it's no. a major major root yeah. of all evil you think sorry say that again it's a major root of evil major root but of to evil. say it's the root of all evil no okay do so you think it's a ma- okay so expand on your answer a little bit why do you think that okay so in in, in a population where there's a hundred percent of people yeah if you were to give 99 percent of people a million pounds they're all getting up to no good mm-hmm. but the one percent will think of how can i make the world a better place how can i impact someone's life how can i better 
a circumstance? How can I go abroad to a refugee camp and help out? So to say that money is the root to all evil would mean that you're ignoring this 1% of uh, okay, okay. Yeah, good people out there. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, but... Majority, yeah, for sure. But I would disagree with that statement okay. because yeah. the money itself is not causing... E- the money is it's just money. Yep. It's just, you know, a piece of paper, obviously. not It's not always w- just, you know, material. Yeah. But it's just paper. It's I think it's about the person. Yeah, it, what we're saying goes hand in hand. Yeah. So I'm saying 1% of people are going to do good with that million pounds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because you're not going to find 90, 99... Would you say 99% of the globe are good people or bad people? In terms of, like, what they would do if they were given what a million dollars. What they would do with dollars. the money? Yeah, like, how most, much... Most of them wouldn't do anything yeah. with it. Yeah, do you get what I'm trying to say? Majority of people wouldn't, like... Out. Okay, let me let me even narrow it down. From a million pounds, how much do you think someone would give in charity? What? What do you mean if someone... Like, like, if, like if, someone, if the average person was to be given a million pounds and they've never seen a million pounds in their life before, how much of that million do you think they would give in charity? Or how much of that million would they use to help people? Maybe like a grand? Less than a grand? Less than a grand. Let's, let's, just, let's, say, you put, let's say 10 grand. Yeah. Let's even push it 10 grand. you still got 990k left. True. Yeah. Still a lot of money. Do you get what I'm trying to say? Yeah. So what we're saying goes hand in hand. I agree. It's the people that are, pro- it's the, people that are the problem. Mm-hmm. Money is the tool. Mm-hmm. If you're not upright within yourself, within your heart as a person, you're not gonna know what to do with the money. You're yeah. not gonna know how to bless someone because you grew up not knowing how to give with an open hand. You've always been transactional in terms of giving. You've always been taught to give and expect a return. When you've loaned somebody money, you've always waited for a return, although that is what a loan is by definition. Mm-hmm. I grew up differently. Like, if I loan someone something, I don't expect it back. Hey, I'm not saying start asking me for money now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but if I, if I give someone something, I'm not expecting anything back. Not because I'm a good person, but simply because I understand the pressure of being in a low point in your life, asking someone for money and being given a date to pay it back by. Mm-hmm. Obviously, there's strict, like, it's good to have boundaries in place and not being taken for a mug and, you yeah, know, yeah. getting your money back Definitely. on time. But I'm not the kind of guy that will apply pressure because I was once in that position where I owed 6K because yeah. camera equipment got stolen. Oh. And I understand how it feels to get that pressure on you and being reminded, yo, like, what's going on? Yeah, thing. Yeah, like, yeah. When am I going to get the Your money? Your experiences may give you that extent. Yeah, bro, I don't want anyone to feel what, I feel what I felt. Being in debt is the worst feeling in the world. Yeah. It's, it's the worst. You can't sleep. You, you, you go to sleep heavy-chested. It's always on your mind. You know, um, it's, it's modern slavery. Modern slavery is being in debt. Yeah. Yeah, but it's always, it's, 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 it's about having the perspective then. Like, or I always think whenever I've been, you know, short on money or something like that, yeah. you know, I've been in situations like that, always think of the perspective. There's always someone that's, doesn't even, you've you got a roof over your head, like, alhamdulillah in this country, you've got food on the table, you've got a roof over your head. Yeah. What more can you ask for? Like, you exactly. have to be grateful. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, but just trusting back on that, on, on, on the money uh, is evil thing. I think, Personally, it's saying that the money is evil is taking away the accountability of the person. I know what you're saying it goes hand mm. in hand, but it's more taking away the accountability. So like someone will spend that money, but then it's like, oh yeah, the money's evil though. Like, nah, nah, mm. the money's evil. You no, know I agree, say? I like, agree. It's a tool, it's a tool, but the money itself is not evil. Like it's in itself. Yes. It's about you as a person and you're a bad person. Yeah. It's going to bring it out more because you've got more opportunities. I agree, yeah. But nah, if you're a good I person and we see that sure. in this modern day and age, like when... If you're a good person, you will do these projects, and you of know these kind you, of things. It comes back down to what, what 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 do they say? How you do anything is how you do everything. Yeah. If you're just a bad person by nature, you're gonna do bad things when you get money. <laughs> if you're a good person by nature, you're gonna do good things when you get money. Yeah, alhamdulillah, definitely. But yeah, um, money isn't isn't. I'll be honest with you, man. It's dead. Yeah. It's a nice tool, but it's dead. Like for anyone watching at home. You know, they say if someone wants, and I'm, I'm not trying to get all preachy, but well, lie, it's the truth. Like, if you want the dunya, it's, it's an advice that the people of knowledge give. If you want, if someone wants the dunya, become close with the Quran. If someone wants the akhirah, become close with the Quran. If someone wants both, become close with the Quran. Mm-hmm. Because once you do, you realize that money really isn't it, bro. Like, 
Alhamdulillah, I'm so grateful to wake up with a roof over my head. Bro, I'm waking up in the penthouse with panoramic views of the entire city every single morning on the highest floor. And I'm thinking, is this life? Mm. Going downstairs, jumping in a McLaren. I'm playing Quran in my McLaren because I've tried to stop music slowly, yeah. slowly. I'm trying. But you think to yourself, is this it? Yeah. People might not believe me because like, oh, it's rich from you to say because you're now in this position. Yeah. But I was in the same shoes as you, striving for all this stuff. And now that I'm finally here, it's like, what more is there to this dead life? Yeah. The there novelty, the novelty of it wears off after Bro, you. the loneliness. Yeah. Just feeling empty. Having basically everything at your fingertips. Knowing that you can pretty much do whatever you want to do that's associated with money because you've got the money to do it. But then it leaves you thinking like, it's a verse in the Quran. And what was the worldly life compared to the afterlife except little? Yeah. Little time, just time passing. So many different verses in the Quran. Like you, you want the worldly life, but the akhirah, the hereafter, is better and it's, gonna, it's permanent, it's going to stay. Mm-hmm. Know that the worldly life is just play it's just it's just amusement and play and time wasting and yeah. a big deception it's the test man and that's how you know and that's why like like I said to you in one of my um, poems that I write I said it's a different type of risk but khitamuhu wasn't misk and what that means in Arabic is basically you know how sometimes you might have a cup of tea yeah. and you're drinking your tea why do people leave the final bits of uh, the tea that's in the glass? It's, it's usually like the herbs yeah, and the spices yeah, yeah. that's mixed up. Yeah. It's not really the nice stuff to drink, right? So Allah in the Quran, he explains a type of drink that the believers will drink yeah. on the Day of Judgment um, in the Akhirah in Jannah. And it says, خِتَامُهُ misk وَفِي ذَلِكَ فَلِتَنَافِسِ الْمُتَنَافِسُونَ In this drink, the ending of it is misk. Misk is the oud, you know, this musk, they yeah, call yeah. it musk. The ending of the drink is going to be like musk. Obviously, our, our, our brain is so limited to even think of this comparison. Mm-hmm. Allah knows exactly what he means by that. Um, the ending of the drink in Jannah is going to be musk, misk, right? And Allah says, and for this, let the competitors, let the competitors compete. So in my line where I said different type of rizq, Khitamu who wasn't misk. Mm-hmm. When you get this type of risk, you realize that the ending khit- khitam oh, okay. means the ending of it. Mm-hmm. So the same way the ending of the cup. Different type of risk, khitamu who wasn't misk. You're blessed with this type of risk now and you realize the ending of it is not misk. It's not yeah. sweet. It's not nice. Unless you have what? You have iman in your heart and you're able to realize the warnings, the, the prohibitions and the commandments that Allah told you to stick to and the prohibitions that Allah, Allah told you to stay away from mm-hmm. and I feel like now I'm slowly at the point where I've, I've tried to stop certain bad habits of mine and I'm trying every single day and I've just come to realize like your life is nothing without the Quran yep. that simple without the deen exactly. your life is zero yeah 100% man 100% I couldn't put it better myself yeah. as you said man um, but yeah it's like, it's like you know going through going through the test of the dunya and then knowing what's in store after if you pass the test yeah but that's like the basic principles of what we're doing in the dunya like with with the training with the business like you're working towards yeah. something yeah. you're working towards something for the ultimate for the end end uh-huh, goal uh-huh. but people don't understand there's, there's that you have to put in the work yes. you have to put in the hard work you have to be face the adversity take it on and as you said you know your experiences made you who you are today yeah. and that's the best way you learn through your yeah. bad experiences yeah. that who you become so you know alhamdulillah as, as, uh, you know as long as we stay on the right track yeah. on the dean following sure. that following that compass staying on yeah. the right track you know nothing nothing should be able to and, and the, on the opposite end as well a lot of people think that earning money is a bad thing it's actually yeah. an act of worship Earning money is an act of worship in the deen. Yeah. 
you have to go out there and provide for your family. So by you going to work, if you just wake up every single day and say to yourself, you know, you renew your intention and you say to yourself, I'm going to work to provide for my family, you're going to get rewarded just for going to work the entire day. Mm. But a pro- like d- <laughs> Dean hacks, people don't realize these things. So it's like you're going to work every day, missing out on such great reward because you're not just renewing your intention. Yeah. If you go wake up in the morning and you say to yourself, I'm going to work, Allah, I'm going to work to earn a living for my family, to provide for my family, you're now getting rewarded for the entire time you're sitting at your desk in an office. Mm. But you didn't start with that intention, so you're not going to get that reward. Do you get what I'm saying? So earning money isn't a bad thing. Earning large sums of money isn't a bad thing. The bad thing is when you neglect the person that gave this to you. You And you don't show your gratitude and you don't come with your five pillars. You don't come with your salah. You don't Mm. give in charity. That's when it's detrimental because the same way Allah gives is the same way Allah can take. Yep. And the thing is, like, if you lost all of that, you have that there, you know. Yep. If you lost all the money, if you're a person that forgets about Allah, then when yep. you have the money, yep. when you lose that money, yep. you're going to be in such a bad it's place. It's the person that yep. doesn't forget, yep. he loses his money. He, yep. he knows he can yep. get to that place again. It's a verse in the Quran. Allah said, they forgot Allah. So we have forgotten them. Yeah. It's, it's there, man. The guidelines there. And yep. it's just there for people to understand and... Inshallah, you know, we're always, all, always striving. Everyone, everyone's a sinner. No mm. one's perfect. Yeah. So we're always striving towards that. So inshallah, you know, inshallah. We, will, we will get there. Um, inshallah, man. That's all we've got time for today, man. I appreciate you coming down uh, today, you know, taking your time out to come and, come and you know, be a part of Vision Nation today. Appreciate it, man. Allah. And, you know, we gave, we gave a lot of words of wisdom, wisdom yeah. to our um, viewers. And uh, hopefully, Pleasure even if all changes, man, bro. you know, the yeah. life of one person or affects the life inshallah. of one person. That's our job. Then. Pleasure's all, man. But thank you very much for having me at Vision Nation. And I hope you guys are able to take any little uh, value from this. Inshallah. Shameless plug. Yeah. Yurim yeah. University to the world and back. Yeah. Links will be in the description, description. to his Instagram and uh, all his socials and everything. So uh, appreciate everyone that's uh, tuned in today. Um, give us a subscribe on YouTube if you haven't already. Makes a whole load of difference. Uh, check us out on Instagram if you don't follow us. Uh, but I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.